A reading from the first book of Kings. After the death of Naboth, the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Start down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He will be in the vineyard of Naboth, of which he has come to take possession. This is what you shall tell him. The Lord says, After murdering, do you also take possession? For this the Lord says, In the place where the dogs licked up the blood of Naboth, the dogs shall lick up your blood too. Ahab said to Elijah, Have you found me out, my enemy? Yes, he answered, because you have given yourself up to doing evil in the Lord's sight, I am bring, bringing evil upon you. I will destroy you and will cut off every male in Ahab's line, whether slave or free man in Israel. I will make your house like that of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and like that of Baasha, son of Ahijah, because of how you have provoked me by leading Israel into sin. Against Je Jezebel, too, the Lord declared, the dogs shall devour Jezebel in the district of Jezreel. When one of Ahab's line dies in the city, dogs will devour him. When one dies in the field, the birds of the sky will devour him. Indeed, no one gave himself up to doing the evil in the sight of the Lord as did Ahab, urged on by his wife, Jezebel. He became completely abominable by following idols, just as the Amorites had done, whom the Lord drove out before the children of Israel. When Ahab heard these words, he tore his garments and put on sackcloth over his bare flesh. He fasted, slept in the sackcloth, and went about subdued. Then the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Have you seen that Ahab have, has humbled himself before me? Since he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his time. I will bring the evil upon his house during the reign of his son. Okay. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. Be merciful, Be merciful O Lord, for we have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Be, Be merciful, O Lord, Lord, for we have sinned. Turn away your face from my sins, and blot out all my guilt. Free me from blood guilt, O God, my saving God. Then my tongue shall revel in your justice. Be, Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You've heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his son to rise on the bad and the good, and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not tax collectors do the same? 
And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. For those of you that uh, didn't go to Mass yesterday or who did not look at the scripture readings from Mass, a little bit of context is necessary, and it is that Naboth has a vineyard, and Ahab wants it. He offers to buy it, fair enough, but Naboth says, no, this is my ancestral inheritance. I can't give it up. So Ahab pouts. And Jezebel, his queen and wife, says, what's your problem? He says, well, Naboth won't give me his vineyard. He says, I'll take care of that. She gets two people to bear false witness against Naboth that he has cursed God and king, and then they haul him out and stone him to death. And so Jezebel says, well, he's dead now. Why don't you go take the vineyard? And that's where our story begins today. Not the prettiest story in the whole world, and yet it is something that I think raises issues for us. The whole context we have here raises issues for us. I could easily have probably chosen to do uh, the Mass prayers for forgiveness of sins today, but it seemed to me better to try to understand, and we're not going to get an answer, I'm just going to be raising questions, trying to understand the relationship between mercy and justice, because that is really a focal point of what we are told in the narrative today, okay? You've got this horrible murder that has been committed. And is Ahab going to be punished? He's being condemned. He grovels, he tears his garments, puts on sackcloth, etc., etc., sleeping in the sackcloth. And God says, see, he's repented. I will bring the evil on his descendants, not on him. That sounds hard. It sounds rough. But what the scriptural author is attempting to do is to sort out the balance between justice and mercy. Okay? And this is an old story. This is an old story. We see a similar kind of thing with the story of David and Uriah and Bathsheba. Whereas it's not David who's punished, but the baby dies. Okay? We see something like this in, in this, the story of Solomon. Solomon, because of all the adultery, not adultery, but adultery toward God that he enter, enters into by making high places and altars to his various pagan wives, God says, that's it, I've had it with you, but for the sake of your father David, I won't destroy the kingdoms in your time, but in your son's time. And then we get the split between the southern and northern kingdoms. This is the, the context in many ways of the whole of the book of the prophet Jonah. Should the Ninevites be let off the hook just because they repent in sackcloth and ashes? This is the context also of the story of the Maccabees, especially the, the seven sons who are tortured to death. Okay? Where will justice prevail over mercy? Where will mercy prevail over justice? We see that throughout the entire history of the church with the martyrs. We see it with the Jews, particularly with the Holocaust. How do we balance the issues of justice and mercy? That's a question that I don't think the scriptural author today gives us any answer to, but it's an important one for us to reflect on. Maybe the most important thing that we can reflect on is for us today, how will we balance mercy and justice? The gospel tells us to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Well, that's not going to happen too easily. But we may want to strive for it, to strive, okay, when is it time for ourselves to be held accountable, for others to be held accountable, and when is it time properly to beg for and to rely on mercy and to give that mercy to others? Hard questions. But as Christians, these are questions we need to live with. So let us stand and pray.